Stuart Harvin and we're at the Savoy Hotel in London having just watched the judging of the Wedding Blog Awards for 2014. Stuart has kindly decided to spend some time with me this morning to answer some questions that we've got for him so we're going to pick his brains and find out just how he's become the success that he has. Stuart, thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Um, what I'd really like to do is give our viewers the chance to know a little bit more about you, your back history, who you are, where you've come from and how you got to where you are today. So perhaps you can just tell us a little bit more about Stuart Parvin. Well, what, as a child I probably always wanted to be a fashion designer, but I went to an all boys school, you, you oh. have that kind of pressure <laughs> on you, but you're going to go and do something sensible at university and yeah. your parents want you to do that, but I, I kind of rebelled and I did my art A level as a fourth A level just to, for my amusement okay. and by the time I got to the point of getting my university place I sort of pleaded with my parents said look can I go to art college and do my foundation course which they let me do as a sort of as an alternative to doing a gap year I went ah. ahead and did that but after about two weeks of being there I decided there was no way I was going to do my university career <laughs> and I ended up by going to Edinburgh um, Art College to study fashion um, for three years then, having left that, I went to work for a couturier who does a very similar kind of thing to I do now, um, and I worked for him for three years. Okay. I, I sort of got all the skills I could get from that, went to do something completely different in a different area of the industry, and I went to work for a big manufacturer, where back ah. in the day we did all of the evening wear for Debenhams and Miss Selfridge, yeah. all the high street stores, a lot of the international sort of um, multiples, sort of like CNA in Europe yeah. and Kastad in Germany. I did that, it was a, it was a, I traveled loads, we went to all the textile exhibitions, we went to New York a lot. Um, I, I learned an enormous amount of stuff from that. And we, do, yeah. we created, every six weeks we created two new collections. Um, of every, made, six every six weeks of probably 60 pieces. So I'm, I've always been a really fast worker, that suited me, but after, after two and a half years I'd had enough and I decided um, that I would open my own, own collection, my own store, and then from there I've developed that. We, about four years later we, did, we launched our wedding collection. So we started out with a, a sort of a regular clothing line, yeah. um, clothing line. We then introduced a um, a bespoke to order um, wedding collection, which first of all we sold to Caroline Castigliano to her boutiques. Now that right. has gone into, we've, we've changed our business plan slightly. We have our own store in Beach and Place and we sell to about um, 14 stores throughout the country. So it's quite exclusive then? Oh yeah, it's exclusive and we sell in Japan and in, in, Austro in, sorry, in New Zealand. Okay, well that, that was a good potted history. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get down to business. Um, within what we do at the UK Academy, we're training students in wedding planning, design and styling. And one of the biggest things they find hard to understand or hard to really deal with is inspiration. They know where to get it from, but what they find hard is what they do with it once they've found it. I.e. how do they take the inspiration and turn it into something tangible? So if they see a building somewhere, how do they then let that building and the architecture of that building influence the design of an event? Now obviously you are doing the same sort of thing within the designs that you do, so how do you take the inspiration you find and turn it into something tangible within the design of your dresses? I think the key thing to do anything like that, you, you have the inspiration you found within yourself or with, um, from whatever you're doing and, the, and if you're working with an individual bride you've got her perspective, but yeah. you have to take that and you have to use that inspiration to provide something or design something that's true to yourself and if you, if you suddenly go off on a tangent and you do something that is kind of not what you believe in and not what your genuine style is it's never going to be the same success it will be if you stay true to your own principles and within those principles I think you can you can have a diverse style yeah. but you have to have I think you have to have a strong sense of style and the more the stronger that is I think the more successful you'll be because people will come to you for a look. It's almost like a signature style. A thing. signature style. For instance, we occasionally get people who come and say, I really want this sort of bias cut style. My immediate um, thing, if you want a bias cut dress, go to yeah. somebody else it's because not it's not do. what I do. Yeah. If, you, if you want a boho look, you don't come to me. If you want classic, structured, beautiful dresses, um, that have a traditional elegance. They might they, they might be really fashion led. They might be really modern, but they have to have a sort of a, a structure, a um, a certain construction to them. That's what I do well. And if we go within that path, 
you create something amazing. If you start to go off and want, I don't know, too far off, too far off what, what you yeah, do. It's, it's, yeah, it's never going to be the success if you stick to what you want, what, what I do well. That's why.